Greetings everybody and welcome back to the jungles of Fishbourne here in Chichester Harbour. We're going to be heading south today to West Wittering Beach. I'm very excited about getting there. It's the only sandy beach I can think of in West Sussex and we're going to have a few hours there and a camp there so I'm looking forward to getting there tonight. After that tomorrow morning we're going to be heading over Selsey, Pagham and finishing up in Bognor Regis. Should be a nice little section this. It's a sunny but cloudy day. Apparently it's going to get much sunnier later on. So if it warms up a bit, maybe we can treat ourselves and have a little swim. Right, let's get hiking guys. So there's not currently much water around. It's a little bit here before the sluice going out to the harbour. But um, the tide's way out at the moment. It should be coming in just as we arrive at the beach, which is perfect. Well, it's been a pretty naff summer. It's been raining a lot recently. And this is the result. Look how green this grass is. All right, folks, it's just past Del Key, apparently, this is one of the top 10 places in the world to watch the sunset. The sunset would be presumably over there. just leaving the marina and the yacht club behind and now we're on Chichester Canal which has some very unusual canal side homes actually submerged in the water on both sides lots of birds as well as you can hear now we leave these bits behind and we'll be heading further towards Itchener it gets a bit quieter here I think most of the dog walkers come from Chichester they stop there for something to eat and head back well, as we continue along this path it's a very affluent area, as you'd expect around here, guys, with a marina and a yacht club nearby. A plane trying to talk over me. Places like Orchard House. So we're off the coast a little bit here, guys. Um, this is the marina, which is uh, all private, private access and uh, some plush houses also alongside the riverfront so we continue along these country lanes here this isn't one of the plusher marinas admittedly this one is sorry guys got nothing for you Well, not much to report at the moment, folks. There's no England coast path or any other kind of uh, national trail or path along here. So I'm just kind of making it up myself, sticking as close to the coast as possible. As you can see, see the boats over there. That's as close as we can get. It's your typical English summer's day today. It's about 21, 22 degrees, uh, sunny with clouds. But this time of year, it doesn't get any more typical than that, really.
Okay, folks, we're now in Itchena Harbour. Very pleasant surroundings, as you can see. Over there, we've got a ferry, which would take you over the water there to Bosom Ho, where we camped out last time. Literally just across the water there. So it's taken us about six hours walking right around the peninsulas, when it probably would have taken less than six minutes to get here on the boat. Turning into a very pleasant walk now, right alongside the shore. And I'm pleased to say we're going to be alongside the shore all the way now until West Wittering, our final stop for the evening. Well, folks, we're almost there. We're almost at West Wittering. Between Itchena and here, I haven't seen anybody. It's been very quiet indeed. That's all going to change soon, though, because West Wittering is a very popular beach. Over there is uh, what they call the east bit of it. And you can see the sand dunes and the people on the beach there. It has its celebrity residence as well, West Wittering. Keith Richards lives in the house that him and uh, Mick Jagger were arrested at in the 60s on drug offences. He still owns that property. Bought it for something silly like 20 grand back in the 60s, worth millions now. Uh, Kate Winslet, Nicholas Lyndhurst, Michael Ball. We're now in an area called Roman Landing, which, as the name would suggest, is one of the two places that it's believed the Romans may have landed first in Britain. It's hard to imagine exactly where they would have landed. Um, obviously the shoreline's changed quite a lot, I'd imagine, in the last 2,000 years. The other place, of course, being uh, in Sandwich Bay, Richborough area, where we were a few weeks ago. So you may or may not be able to make it out on the camera, but the car park there in the distance is absolutely chock-a-block. It's Tuesday today, or no, Wednesday, sorry, but it is summer holidays, so that's to be expected. It's a very popular beach and it's hard to get to without driving. So despite the ludicrous amount you have to pay for parking, I think it's 15 pound a day, it's still a very popular place. So no swimming allowed on this beach. Let's head round. It's a bit busy that side. Let's head round to the spit. Yes, it's the return of the ghostly white feet. So it's not too busy on this side, guys, over here on the east spit. The tide's on its way in, so I'm gonna leave it a little while before I go in for a dip. Time to chill for a little while. Right, folks, I've been asked to do a drinks review. Against my better judgment, I didn't want to do this, but I was asked, and so I'm obliging. I'm reviewing, don't worry, I'm not boozing just yet not until after I've been for a swim. Prime, yeah, I, I really do want to spend my own money on this stuff, but there we are, it's two pound a bottle, uh, orange mango, Prime by KSI. I mean, I have been hiking for a few hours without really drinking anything, so it's going to be nice. But um, yeah, yeah, that, that's half decent actually. Um, considering it's two pounds, it loses a point, but I'd say seven out of ten for Prime. It's not that bad, it's not just a fad. Uh, yeah, that's no, all right. Right, let's get in there and have a dip. Well, oh. Well, even though it's almost high tide, I've walked out miles and I'm still only up to my waist. <laughs> ah, it's not so bad once you're in. All right, so just to give you a bit of orientation, guys, over here, this piece of land, that's the Isle of Wight, just in front of us, 
is Thorny Island. No, sorry, Hailing Island, beg your pardon. Thorny Island is down here. Uh, I think that's the sandy beach we were at last week. And down here we have Bosham, Chidham, etc. Tomorrow when we head around the corner here, round to the east, that'll be us heading east all the way through until we reach the other side of Sussex in Rye. So it seems like more and more people are leaving the beach. Hopefully sooner rather than later it gets a bit quieter. And we set up camp. I'm thinking up here on the dunes. And I'm hoping it'll be a spectacular sunset here over Hailing Island. That'd be really nice. And then we've got a long walk tomorrow, about 17 or 18 miles. That's well, really nice here in the water now. It's been such a crap summer. <laughs> it's been the first nice day, it's been for weeks. All right, better get out of the water before one of these dogs starts going rummaging around my bag to find my food. Got a couple of beers to try out this evening. The first one, Beaver Town Gravity Hazy IPA, 6.5%. Yep, that is good. That is good. I guess uh, 7.5. Right, beer number two is the Thousand Yard Stair. Hold on, let me just get the angle right. Here we go, Thousand Yard Stair. Hazy Pale Whale, gluten free, 5.4%. Down the hatch. Yeah, good, good, 7.5. So folks, it's eight o'clock now. The sun should be going down in about half an hour. Just waiting for the last remnants of the people to go. They seem to be doing some kind of photo shoot over there. A couple of dog walkers like this lady here. They're doing some kind of photo shoot over here as well. Um, I think that girl's pregnant and it's like a pregnancy one. They're probably waiting for the sunset, which isn't gonna be long. I've decided where I'm going to camp. It's going to be around about here. And what's great about this is that we can have the sun coming up over here in the morning, which will be really nice. Having breakfast, looking at that. But for the meantime, I will leave you with a time lapse of the sunset here. And then uh, I'll show you when I, when I set up camp. folks the sun has gone down now lovely evening I'm all set up look at this we're setting great place out for Bivy can't really top that to be honest absolutely beautiful still got the uh, camera recording the sunset Distance. The uh, still got the models over there. They're yeah, still doing their photo shoot. I think they're about ready to go. Got lots of birds, as you can see as well, in the sky. What a beautiful evening. So that's going to be it for tonight, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Got a lot of hard miles to walk tomorrow. I'll see you on sunrise. Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful morning it is. There's a little bit of a chill in the air, hence I'm still in bed having a bit of breakfast. Yeah, I've got the world's smallest apple, an orange, banana, fruit and nut, water, and a Starbucks Frappuccino. So I'm gonna have this, sit back, enjoy the sunrise, wait for it to warm up a little bit before I get on the move.
What a beautiful morning, guys. Let's get going. So I had a really good night's sleep last night. I think when you're camping, you have really vivid dreams. Last night, I had this dream where I was still in my bivvy, but it was half eight in the morning and I was surrounded by people demanding to know what I was doing there. After that, it was a bit trickier getting back to sleep because uh, it was only about half four and it had already started getting a little bit light. Up until then, however, from about half 10, I slept pretty much all the way through. Here's where we head east. We've been heading south from that direction and now it's gonna be east for most of the rest of the day. First up will be Celsi. Futile attempts to get some of the sand off. Certainly fresh this morning, guys, but uh, it's starting to warm up now. It's almost high tide, just half an hour off. We're on uh, West Wittering's main beach now. You can see the uh, beach huts there. A nice sandy beach for as far as the eye can see. Well, my terrible luck with sunglasses continues. This is my fourth pair that I've either lost or broken within the last month or so. This is why I never spend more than about seven pounds on a pair of sunglasses. Kate's place. Could this be Kate Winslet's beach hut? It's a bit bland if it is. Come on, Kate. We want it more colourful than that. Well, the tide's pretty much fully in now and if I were to continue along the beach, I'd be walking across the pebbles. So I've come up here on this grassy bank and it's alongside some of these beautiful homes. So check this one out. Glorious. Private beach here, so we can't go up here. But look what we have: England Coast Pass. Rather strange design here. We've got houses on this side, and then we've got the private beaches on this side, with a path in the middle that's public. I'm sure, it makes more sense. But path the other side of the houses. report at the moment guys just very pleasant walking nice houses along here nice grassy bank and a the beach there it's all very pleasant very nice I must say I do love a turret something about turrets that I like spiral staircases as well I'm a fan of them right got a big sign state and private property and then we've got public footpath here, so which is it? Which is it? So we're in Bracklesham Bay now, walking on the pebbles, as I'm sure you can hear. I'm not a fan of walking on pebbles, it's hard work and it slows you right down. But because of my stubborn resolve to be as close to the coast as possible for as long as I can on this walk, I'm having to historically march on through the pebbles. Some nice houses here. It's 
Selsea is off there in the distance. That's where we're headed for at the moment. Sorry sight here folks, the Union flag in absolute tatters. And beside it, I'll come round so you can actually see it properly. And beside it we've got the Australian flag flying high and proud. They're taking over guys. Well that's where we should have come out on the England coast path here. We've got to walk in inland quite a bit and it carries on along the pebbles. Got an end of the world feeling here guys. Got an end of the world feeling here guys. Battered old groins, wood and seaweed. Celsi is over the wall, tantalizingly close. Alas, we have to divert inland through a nature reserve to get there. Adds on the miles a little bit. But at least it looks like we're gonna be off these pebbles. Feels like I'm a long way from the beach. Very quiet here. The only occasional noise is the geese mocking me by flying overhead to the next beach or wherever they're going. Did you know geese can migrate up to 5,000 miles? I don't say you don't learn anything watching this channel. Right, I'm just coming up to Ham, which as far as I can see, only has about 10 houses, so it should be called Hamlet, really. We'll be heading south now into Selsey, after heading north for quite some time. Very tempted to do a bit of scrumping here. I'll leave it though. And here we are again folks, back within sight of the coast at last. So since Ham, we've sort of circuited around the north of Selsey and we've come this far west now. Selsey Sands, I think it's called, or West Sands. Caravan Park is there. And we've got a circuit back around this way to get back onto the coast. Could take a shortcut, but that's not what we're about. We're hiking the whole coast, as uh, annoying as it may be. So we're having to walk around the back of this uh, caravan park here. And my God, it goes on for a bit. A nice static homes to be fair. Spiral staircase there, leading up to the terrace on the roof. Not bad. Well, we've made it. So we come down here, all the way around here, do, 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 do. all the way around here. This is where the caravan park is, and this is where we are. Oh, back on the coast. Looking back towards Bracklesham and West Wittering, Portsmouth Wealth in the distance. And we're heading back along the pebbles.
not too much going on at the moment folks that breakfast made me feel a bit sleepy uh, walking through quiet residential streets at the moment uh, we can't seem to get down onto the coast there's a lot of uh, private beaches and stuff like that uh, so we've got about 10 miles maybe 11 miles to Bognor Regis still quite a way to go yet So we've just come off the uh, southern tip of Selsea, just around the corner there. As we've come around the corner, we've got our first view of Bognor Regis over there in the distance. Doesn't look too far from here. However, as per usual, it's not a direct path. We're going to have to uh, go around this corner and then sort of skirt around Pagham Harbour because there's no contiguous footpath all the way around. So. That's going to be another good few miles of diversion. I'd say we've probably got about nine or ten miles still to go. I've totally underestimated this walk. I said about 17 or 18 miles. That was just a quick glance. I think it's going to be closer to 23 or 24 miles. However, no complaints. It's a nice day. Let's continue. Poor mangled feet, mile after mile of pebbles. All right, we've got two options here, and I'm glad that it's low tide, it means we can take the more direct path rather than the high tide option around Church Norton. All right, here we are for the second big diversion of the day down here and around big marshland here, local nature reserve. I'm speaking quietly because you've got the bird watchers there. And we have to go this way, all the way around to get to there. On the horizon, I can just about make out Bognor Regis Pier and Butlins. I'll try and zoom in for you. They're way off in the distance quite a long distance so I suppose we better get going this place is absolutely huge completely underestimated this one this is even bigger than the last diversion well that's Celsius done and dusted what did I think of Selsey? Interesting little place. It's out on its own, it's like its own little peninsula. One road in, one road out. And uh, definitely has that feeling of isolation. And I presume the residents like it that way. It means no one's passing through their town. So it's just their town and the holiday makers, I guess. We're heading on the right path now. We'll shortly be in Pagham Harbour. <laughs> well folks, here we are at Pagham Harbour at the end. Just over there, believe it or not, is Selsey. 
Now I've just been reading up and the diversion we took around here is approximately five miles, maybe a little bit more. I know that because I was just reading up uh, on a notice board there that said smugglers used to operate in these routes and they would use the water to get from one side to the other and the police that were chasing after them would use the roadway on horse and cart for whatever reason I do not know. It's no wonder that smuggling was such a lucrative business around 200 years ago when the law enforcement was that inept. Anyhow, we've just walked all the way around there, five miles or so, to avoid this little bit of water here. I'm pretty sure I could have waded across there, no problem. Never mind, onwards to Bogner. down this quiet street in Pagan now. The sea is on that side, these houses. Now there's a pathway down there to the beach. I could be walking along these pebbles here. My feet have had enough today. And the England coast path goes down here, so that's good enough for me. No sooner had I said that, than the path becomes a pebble path. Can't win today. Pebbles. Coast path. Pebbles. Coast path. No person shall be between the hours of 10 in the morning and 6 in the evening on any day between the 1st day of May and the 30th day of September ride any horse or other animal on any part of the seashore or promenade. Very formal. Spogna Regis is the most deprived town in West Sussex. You wouldn't think it to look at the outskirts. And whilst we're on the subject of Bogner trivia, the reason it's called Bogner Regis is Regis means royal, and this town was used by King George V and when he wasn't particularly well. He'd come down here, get a bit of sea air, a bit of sunshine, and it actually improved his health. You may have heard the term Bugger Bogner. Bugger Bogner is said to be. King George V's famous last words when he was on a hospital bed in London and he's told by one of his advisors that he'll be back to health pretty shortly and he'll be able to revisit Bogner. His last words were then, oh bugger Bogner. Another interesting statistic about Bogner is that it is officially Britain's sunniest town in terms of sunshine hours throughout the year, over 1900 I believe. I've been absolutely starving for the last hour or so, so I had to stop for an emergency burger and chips. Almost there now guys, we're on the home straight. the end of another video what a grueling day today has been wow i completely underestimated that as always thanks for joining me if i never see a pebble again for the rest of my life it'll be too soon i hope to see you next time guys Ciao. we'll be continuing west all the way to rye no east oh start that again here's where we head west no east <laughs> Start that again.